Hello, this is Mr. Smith, also known as Teach Smith on YouTube, and this is a Power on Conflict poetry lesson on Charge of the Light Brigade, and this will be part one. This is for the week commencing the 8th of June 2020. This is primarily for Year 9 students at Rygate School, though of course other students are welcome to have a watch. So, some context on the poet, Alfred Law Tennyson. Interestingly, at the beginning of his career, he struggled with poverty. So in the early part of his life, or particularly in the early part of his career, trying to make his name as a poet, he was uh, struggling with making money. Of course, later he became wildly, wildly successful. And as a reason for this, he became uh, or was made Poet Laureate. Now, Poet Laureate means that you have to write poems in the national interest. You have to write positive poems about the country. Um, perhaps about the monarchy or about important events. While Alfred Lord Tennyson was Poet Laureate, he wrote The Charge of the Light Brigade in 1855, of course about the infamous charge during the Crimean War. So what are the main messages of the poem? Tennyson is honouring the actions of the soldiers involved. So the actual cavalry soldiers that were involved in the attack, he is honouring their bravery, honouring their discipline and the fact that they didn't hesitate or back down. Tennyson is also portraying the awful consequences of the charge and it's interesting to debate or to see how far Tennyson was illustrating this as a one-off or was there something more going on? Was there something more that Tennyson wanted to critique? So I'm now going to read the poem to you. Please have the poem in front of you and be thinking about the soldiers involved, be thinking about the battle, be thinking about how the soldiers might feel, how the battle felt to them, how it felt to look at, whilst I'm reading the poem. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the light brigades, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the light brigades, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell, boldly they rode and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the six hundred. Flashed all their sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the lines they broke, Cossack and Russian reeled from the sabre stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honour the charge they made, honour the light brigade, noble six hundred. So think about what Tennyson what is Tennyson getting us to think or feel or learn about the soldiers, about the charge itself, about what he wants us to do next? So we're now going to be annotating the poem for language, form and structure. You must have a copy of the poem in front of you in order to complete the next section of the video. You need to make the following notes on a notes page or elsewhere and perhaps at the top of the page of the poem. There are six stanzas, 600 cavalry and 100 horse units. Stanzas 1, 2 and 3 that we'll be looking at today are going towards the enemy. Stanza 4 is fighting the enemy and stanza 5 is retreating from the enemy. Finally, stanza 6 is a call to remember the men. Perhaps even think about why three stanzas are done for the approach or written for the approach and the other three involve three different stages. So we have the first stanza. Hopefully my annotations will be clear as they are color coded. Do not feel the need to use different colors yourself unless you have them to hand. Half a league, half a league, half a league. Now this is a dactylic foot. What do I mean by this? Well, it's three syllables with the first syllable stressed. 
So it's half a league, half a league, half a league onward. Why? Why is this dactylic foot used? Because it's the gallop of the horses, the galloping rhythm of the horses, and also that they're unified. All 600 cavalry are unified together. They move consistently together and onward, onward towards the guns. Now, the Valley of Death, of course, is describing how this valley will become somewhere that a lot of them will die, but is also an allusion, a quotation, a reference to Psalm 23. Now, Psalm 23 is often read at Christian funerals, and it's a blessing at the point of death. So often people will say it when they think they're about to die, and is often read at Christian funerals for someone who has just passed away. So again, it emphasizes the severity of the situation that it will be fatal for many of the soldiers. Charge for the guns. Now this is where the confusion comes from. There are lots of different sets of guns. There are guns that are disorganized and unguarded that the light brigade would have been right to attack. And there are guns that represent the Russian front line and that's where they charge instead. So that's that confusion of that order. The repetition of Valley of Death, again, emphasizes the danger that they're going into, that it will be fatal for many of them, that they will need their Christian faith in order to sustain them and perhaps see them um, through it or perhaps even to see them to heaven. And then the repetition of 600, unity, discipline, no hesitation, military training, military bearing, brings them through. So if at any point any of that is confusing, please do send me a message or through my homework, or if you're not from Rygate School, you may wish to ask a question in the comments. And you can also pause this video to write down these notes. Now, I just wanted to give you a representation of what the battleground looked like. So essentially, the British units are in blue to the left of your screen, and the Russian units are in red to the right of your screen. And as you can see, the light brigade, the blue squares and arrows are moving in the middle of a valley, the North Valley. Unfortunately, as you can see from the red bars, Below and above them, they were surrounded by cannon, and they're moving directly into an enormous amount of Russian forces, essentially the Russian front line. As soon as they enter the valley, they are surrounded by cannon and by muskets, and that's what this next set of stanzas talks about. Was there a man dismayed when confronted with this sight of being surrounded by cannon and muskets? Did any man hesitate? No. So this rhetorical question shows that, that no soldier shows fear or hesitates. Someone had blundered. This breaks the pattern of 600. It emphasizes mistakes, errors, who made the mistake and why. And again, think about how far Tennyson is allowed to go with saying things like this, because he is Poet Laureate, he has to say things that are positive about the nation. So this is the soldier's oath, this repetition of theirs. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Is it a good thing or a bad thing not to question, not to reason, not to think? but just to do and die. Again, this is very, very carefully put by Tennyson because he cannot be overtly, he cannot be openly critical. And also think about the word theirs. Think about us and them, the soldiers and the officers, or soldiers and ordinary people. Again, with the into the valley of death, the biblical reference emphasizes danger and the repetition of road 600, the unity, discipline and no hesitation. Again, please pause the video to copy up any notes that you may have missed.
So this is the final stanza we'll be looking at today. And if you remember from the picture or the, the diagram, the men are now in the valley and they are surrounded by cannon. So this repetition completely surrounded, cannon on their right, cannon on their left, cannon in front. It's a really, really awful situation to be in. Volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell. The sheer force of all the cannons and muskets firing. So it wouldn't just be cannon shells, it'd be early rifles or muskets that thundered like, um, like a thunderclap, really loud. A volley means loads of them, loads of cannon shells, loads of shot, lots of bullets, all at one time. A storm of them, a storm of iron, that sibilant storm, shot and shell. It's like they're in a in hail, but a hail of, um, of, of cannon shells and a hail of bullets. So into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell. This journey for going from life to death to hell. And it would feel like hell, this, he this valley would feel like hell. The noise, huge amounts of noise of the cannons firing, the muskets firing, orders being shouted, men dying, horses dying, men in pain, horses in pain. The heat generated from all the cannon fire and all the musket fire. The smoke generated from all of these things, the smell of gunpowder, the pain you would be feeling um, either personally or, or seeing others in pain. And once again, it's a, a refrain by this point, a musical refrain almost, unity, discipline, no hesitation, despite all of these things happening. So again, pause the video if you need more time. So the plenary for today's lesson, do you think Tennyson portrays the blunder as a one-off mistake or is this something that he sees as typical of the commanders in this war? A very, very interesting question and one he had to be very, very careful about as Poet Laureate. Thank you for watching and for listening, Year 9. I hope this video has been helpful, this video lesson. If you missed anything, of course you can go back, skip to the relevant parts that you need and fill in any gaps. There will be more videos and supplementary tasks to help you understand this poem and we will look at the second half of this poem next week. Thank you and I.